Sorry, they moved the button. Okay, hello everybody, and welcome to our fifth annual Leadership Awards, which we're gonna be holding online to follow up on a wonderful gala leadership event that we had in Vancouver last month. Uh, my name is Tia Lofskart. I'm the Executive Director of the Canada Organic Trade Association, and it is my proud honor to be surrounded by amazing organic leaders all across this wonderful nation. Um, just to start off today, I wanna uh, let you know that the webinar is being recorded and we will be circulating it later on all of our channels. And just to, of course, make sure that we thank our sponsors for this event, which is Nature's Path and ProCert. And before we get started for today's event, we wanna acknowledge that we are on, our offices are located in Ottawa and we are on the unceded, unsurrendered territory of the Anishinaabe Algonquin Nation, uh, whose presence have reached back to time immemorial so let's not to this um we've got several categories of winners and we're going to start with farming because this is really where farming is the seed of our soul and we know that without farmers uh, working at the earth and and making sure that we've got the product to take up all the way through the supply chain that we would not have um, organic. So just to highlight um, that in this Organic Farming Leadership Award, we've got um, the wonderful award winners uh, for this year is Upland Organics. And just to highlight that or Upland Organics is a family owned farm uh, in running mixed cattle and certified organic grain near Wood Mountain, Saskatchewan. And it is uh, Cody who runs the farm along with his wonderful wife, Allison, and their three boys, Declan, Gavin, and Caden. And Cody grew up in Saskatchewan and, and in that area, he completed an engineering degree at the University of Saskatchewan. And Allison was born in Newfoundland and met Cody while completing her PhD in toxicology at the University of Saskatchewan. There are many wonderful attributes about um, this couple that have done so much for the organic sector. They have been volunteering heavily within the organic, every association that I can imagine. They're members of CODA. They're on the board of the Canadian Organic Growers. They're on um, different task forces that we've had in regards to the Common Seed Task Team for the Regulatory Modernization Initiative. Um, Allison has been, of course, the board member at COG, as well as several different subcommittees and financial strategic planning, and also through the Organic Federation of Canada, which facilitates the organic standards. Allison represents Sask Organics on the Standards Technical Committee, so really helping to shape the foundation of organic in this country. And of course, by doing all this volunteer work, they will hope to inspire others, which of course they have and they do. And I love that when, when you're talking with this wonderful rooted family, that they see the big picture, but also the local. So they are selling internationally. They've hosted several international missions at their farm, but they really wanna showcase that growing local does not mean that producers have to just farm it or have to sell at the farmer's market and that you can achieve organic at scale. So without further ado, we're going to hand it over to Cody Straza uh, in order to uh, accept the award. Well, Trying to find you, Cody. Much. Thank you very much. Uh, 
First and foremost, on behalf of Allison and myself and the whole crew at Upline Organics, I'd like to say thank you very much for this award and the recognition that, that comes with. It's an honor to be recognized by Coda as the 2022 uh, Farm of the Year. Uh, Allison can't join us right now. We're in the middle of spring seeding, and which is our busiest time of the year. Uh, right now, she's out running the seeder in a field that's got pretty spotty cell service, so she's able, unable to connect reliably. Uh, I'll also be keeping my comments brief, and I'll be heading back over to the field uh, shortly after I'm done here. Uh, we would like to thank Coda for all of the important work that you do. Uh, advocating for our industry, both domestically and internationally, develops markets for us to sell our products into. This allows us to focus on our farm and grow high-quality products in a way that isn't just sustainable. It's regenerating our soils, our waterways, and our communities. And we're not unique. We're not the only farm doing this. This is the situation for many organic farms across the country. So the, the reach of Coda and the influence is, is very broad. Um, the last few years of COVID has exposed a, a real weakness in our food supply chain. While many people will see these issues as problems, um, I feel these are, are opportunities. Consumers have become much more aware of where their food is coming from and how it's being produced. And there's never been a better time to tell the good story of organic food production. This award is very meaningful to us. As farmers, we take pride in providing a high quality food produced in a responsible way. And it's a huge honor to be recognized for our efforts. Uh, we'll be using this platform that's been provided to help promote organic agriculture as part of a sustainable and healthy food system. Thank you again very much. Thank you so much, Cody. Wonderful to have you. And I'm sorry you weren't able to join us in Vancouver, but uh, live from the farm. Love it. <laughs> That's great. So thank you to Allison as well and continue all the great work. Okay, we're going to move on to our next award. And if you can put up this slide, um, we are uh, moving on to the Organic Supplier of the Year Award. This award recognizes organizations who excel in growing, manufacturing, or distributing organic products in Canada. Accomplishments such as having a broad range of organic supply, development of new organic offerings, marketing and promotion of organic and consumer education initiatives have been considered for the, this recipient of the award. And so for this year's uh, award, we would like to give it to UNFI. And if we could have Stacy join us here as well. Um, for over 40 years, UNFI Canada has been working in the organic and natural space with over 10,000 organic and natural products with over 5,000 organic locations or organic customers across, the, across Canada. And of course, um, they work not only with conventional supermarket chains and natural product stores, but they also work with independent retailers, e-commerce and food service to make sure that organic is uh, being delivered across this great nation. They are the first national organic uh, certified distributor and something that they take a lot of pride in. Of course, one of the divisions of um, UNFI is Pro Organics, and they were a proud founding member of CODA which is pretty amazing. Uh, every year they're, you know, a proud sponsor of Organic Week, helping us to distribute out organic retailer kits to all the stores. And of course they highlight all their organic products within their catalog and really help understand um, the key attributes of organic at the retail level. And then of course with Pro Organics, um, this division of UNFI, they offer a wide range of organic produce to suppliers all throughout Western Canada, having relationships with literally hundreds of organic farmers Farmers, packers and processors located throughout Canada, but also throughout the world to obtain the best quality organic products. And so to highlight, I'd like to um, ask uh, Stacey Kravitz to come to the stage and accept on behalf of Unify. Thanks so much, Tia. Much appreciated. It's really a true honor to be here uh, with all of you today to receive the 2022 Organic Supplier of the Year Award on behalf of Unify Canada. I'd like to acknowledge CODA for their continued commitment to promote and protect the growth of organic trade to benefit the environment, farmers, the public, and our economy. At UNFI Canada, as Tia so eloquently mentioned, we deliver healthier food options to more people. We carry and distribute more than 10,000 organic, natural, and specialty products to more than 5,000 customer locations across Canada. We proudly serve a wide variety of customers and they represent, and represent over 850 uh, supplier partners. 
We bring more products to market, market faster, and we help both the Canadian entrepreneur and the established brands unlock their full potential and transform their businesses for the better. UNFI Canada, as also mentioned, is the, uh, we're very, very proud to be the first national certified organic distributor in Canada, something we take great pride in. All of our DCs are uh, certified organic. There are too many names to list off here, but it goes without saying that this award would not be possible if it were not for the amazing work that UNFI Canada Associates exemplify daily. To my team, thank you for your dedication to our customers, our company vision, and most importantly to each other. Your efforts make us better, stronger, and more successful every day. I'm really so very proud to see UNFI Canada recognized as Organic Supplier of the Year, but our journey doesn't end today. We remain committed to building a brighter future by delivering greater food choices to help feed a healthy future. By embracing innovation and sustainability, we continue to produce and provide more organic and healthier op food options to more Canadians. Thanks again so much, Dakota, and everything that you do. We're really appreciative of this award. Great. Thank you so much, Stacey. That's wonderful. And well-deserved, of course. All right. Well, we're going to move on to our next award, which is the Retailer Award. So going straight from distribution way over to the to the retailer. And this award, of course, is recognizing retailers of all shapes and sizes for their committed efforts to promote organic to consumers. Product promotions, flyers, merchandising, point of sale materials, consumer education will all be considered, of course, as their commitment to carrying organic products as demonstrated by the breadth of product range, private label organic products, and any commitment to increase organic offerings or shelf space. So unfortunately today, um, our recipient could not um, join us due to a family emergency, but I'd like to um, accept this award on behalf of Sharon Walker from Joanne's, Joanne's Place. And they have been a, a leading retailer since 1976, uh, of course, located in Peterborough. Um, you know, their motto is come for the products, but stay for the people. Um, they very much have a vision for this store to inspire wellness and for now and for future generations. And their belief is that they can heal their bodies with quality nutrients. And we always start with certified organic food. We support local certified organic farms and suppliers of our first choice suppliers. We educate our customers of not only the impact on their physical well being, but the well being of the planet when we choose certified organic. And they say that they're very happy to support organizations such as CODA, which continue to advocate for organic and for farmers and suppliers and to help keep them informed on what's happening in this great big organic world. So thank you very much, Sharon, for, um, for all the great work you and your team do at Joanne's Place. And I'm sure you're going to be around for a very much longer period than since 1976. Okay, so we'll move on to the next award. Okay, and we are going to uh, start with the next award, which is for the Organic Innovator of the Year. This award recognizes game changers who've made significant contributions towards growing the organic industry through industry and action in areas such as consumer education and marketing, new market development, public relations, standards development, new product development, retail campaigns, advocacy, and research. And with that, I'd like to call Margaret Coons from Nuts for Cheese to the stage, please. Well, first of all, thank you so much. We're so grateful for this recognition. And um, it was so fun to have been at the gala with so many of you in person at Vancouver. And I want to start just by saying congratulations to all of our, our fellow award winners, including uh, our partners at UNFI. Um, and uh, Joanne's place as well. And, you know, organic practices are so important to us as a company for the same reasons that they're important to me as a consumer. Uh, so many people want to eat healthy, high quality food and also want to know where their food is coming from and, and how it was produced. And there's countless reasons to choose certified organic products. And a lot of those reasons, um, in my experience, mirror the same reasons that people follow a plant-based diet and the kind of big three being the environment, their health and, and ethics. And Organic practices, much like veganism, do tackle intersectional issues and in our mission to source the, the highest quality ingredients to produce 
the most delicious premium vegan cheeses and butters around. We're proud to be a certified organic company, and we strive to embody all that organic certification represents in, in all aspects of our business. Um, CODA is, is such a fantastic organization, and we've become members in 2021 and have been really fortunate to receive benefits from some of their great funding resources for export related activities. So we launched in the States uh, just about a year and a half ago, and so we've been able to recoup uh, funding on things like trade show support, sample sense support, and it's been so significantly helpful to us as a small business to uh, have that support through CODA. And so our US expansion being one of our you know, biggest achievements and, and most exciting, um, you know, company stories as a, as a growing Canadian company uh, has been supported through this organization by helping us develop and deliver on our, our export strategy and, and become the first uh, artisan vegan cheese produced in Canada to, to launch in the U.S. So we've been, you know, so um, humbled by the positive reception and we're, we're still so grateful for our Canadian roots and then what's next for us in terms of innovation and, and growth on our, our home soil and Last thing I want to say is just a special thanks to Caroline and, and the entire team at CODA. We've really enjoyed working with you and are um, thrilled to continue our continued partnership. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Margaret. Well deserved. And the whole time I was out at CHFA, all I ate was your cheese. So I'm very accustomed to all your flavors now. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. So our next one, now we're going to move on to leadership in organic science. Um, this is an award that we give to uh, an outstanding individual who's had a significant impact on organic agriculture through research and education. While it's recognized that research is conducted in teams with the support of technicians and students, this award is intended to uh, acknowledge the leadership or significant impact of an individual's work and research program. This award, we work in conjunction with the Organic Agriculture Centre of Canada, and we uh, outsource who, who wins this award to Andy Hammermeister, who's the director of the Organic Agriculture Centre, because he knows and works with all the researchers across the country. So uh, I'd like to call to the stage uh, Jean Duval, who is this year's recipient uh, of the Organic Science Award. And there's Jean joining us in Vancouver. I'll just say a few words about uh, Jean before he uh, accepts the speech or accepts uh, the award. Um, this is very much um, Jean Duval could be the poster person for bringing organic science to life. Throughout his career, he has been the outstanding communicator and coordinator of scientific activities serving Quebec and the greater organic community in Canada. He is a Bachelor of Science in Ag agronomy and a Bachelor of Science in Soil Science from McGill University. He's currently the director of CTAB yeah, but in only to to listen to this thing that doesn't end in Quebec. So I'll meet you there. And he is also, over the course of his career, he's applied his undergraduate and graduate training, training to enhance organic production and reduce the environmental risks of synthetic fertilizer and pesticide use. He's been an instructor of numerous courses in organic agriculture. He's an organic inspector. He's an extension agent, an applied researcher, and an agronomist. So I will leave it there, even though his credentials are much longer than that, and uh, hand it over to you, Jean, to say a few words. Thank you, Tia. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm, I'm really honored to receive this award and happy to share this event with you all. I would like first to thank Andy Hammermeister of OACC for nominating me for this award and COTA's committee for choosing me this year. My interest in organic started long ago in 1980 while gardening at my parents' house. I wanted to understand more about soils and then decided to study agronomy and soil science at McGill University in the 1980s. I was lucky to have a great mentor there in the person of Stuart B. Hill that some of you may know or remember even if he now lives in Australia. I was lucky to have him as a professor and also as a boss, as I worked after my graduate studies at Ecological Agriculture Projects, EAP, a center that Dr. Hill created in 1974 to document the science of organic. In the 90s, uh, I was responsible for an information service at EAP for the province of Quebec, answering various questions uh, that farmers and agronomists had and documenting my answers with scientific literature and farmers' experience. 
In the first decade of the 21st century, I was busy providing advisory services to farmers in the region of Montreal and different types of production, field crops, fruits, small fruits, vegetables, medicinal plants, name it. I always aimed at basing my recommendations on sound agronomy and organic science. And I conducted many on-farm experiments with the producers. Starting in 2011, I became a researcher at the newly created center, CETAB Plus, the Center for Expertise and Transfer in Organic Agriculture, based in Victoriaville, Quebec. We were only five at the start, and now we're a team of 35 people devoted to organic, either as uh, in research or advisory services. And I've been the director of the center since 2016. At CETAB, we're very close to the farmers. Often we conduct trials in what is called a mother-daughter's model, where an elaborate experiment is conducted at our research center and simpler replicates are conducted on farms. I think this is a great way to collaborate and it benefits both farmers and researchers. I'm amazed how in the last 40 years, organic went from being a marginal type of agriculture, not taken very seriously at the start to a respected approach to feeding the humans of this planet. The crucial role of biology and ecology in agriculture cannot be ignored anymore. So, Thanks again and long life to organic agriculture. <laughs> that's wonderful. Thank you, Jean. <laughs> that's inspiring words, that's for sure. Okay, well, our next award is for the Organic Champion of the Year. And this award recognizes industry leaders who have distinguished themselves professionally for their pursuit of their zeal or notable achievements toward growing advancements, toward growing methods, programs, initiatives, new categories, or product development that promote the growth, sustainability, or influence of organic agriculture and trade. And I think we know that this person has done all of the above um, and more. I'd like to call to the stage Deg Falk, who I used to say was with Nature's Path, but he is now retired. <laughs> um, and I'll just give you a little bit of a background on Dag. He was educated as an agronomist in Norway with a background in agriculture and a strong interest in health, organic farming and food. He became directly involved with organic certification back in 1989 when he started working as an inspector for multiple organic certification, certification agencies in North America for the past 18 years or for the previous 18 years, Dag did work for Nature's Path Organic Foods, North America's first and largest independent organic breakfast food manufacturer, and he just retired in, in March. He was overseeing the company's organic policies and programs, consumer and internal education about the benefits and importance of organics. He's built a strong network and connections between farmers, manufacturers, and consumers. He has also taken the lead in ensuring an adequate amount of cropland is converted to certified organic, enabling uninterrupted organic production and providing organic farmers with access to resources and growing and harvesting techniques that ensure the highest quality of organic crops. In the past two plus years, he's played an integral role in helping legend organic farms, which is uh, part of the Nature's Path family of uh, family owned businesses, become the first farm in Canada to receive the re regenerative organic certification, otherwise referred to as the ROC. Dag, of course, is a true champion for the organic industry. Not only does he promote the benefits of organic food and farming and his regular day job, he always walks the talk. He leads with strong internal compass that balances the growth of the sector while staying committed to the highest integrity of organic principles. He, of course, contributes his expertise to community and industry work. He was a founding member of the Canada Organic uh, Trade Association and was the president for um, all of the terms he could possibly be, which was for nine terms. He was the co-chair of the carbon sequestration and the organic task force. He was served on numerous boards and committees, including the Organic Trade Association in the US, the Prairie Organic Grain Initiative, steering committee, the Organic Agriculture Center of Canada, and the International Organic Inspectors Association, as well as IFOM North America's Board of Directors. 
We, of course, are filled with gratitude um, to recognize Dag for all of his achievements. Um, and of course, his overriding belief that organic agricultural practices are the most important way to regenerate and sustain our life on this planet. So over to you, Dag, uh, to say a few words. Great, thank you, Tia. <clears throat> You know, it's so wonderful to get this recognition and with the timing of my retirement from Nature's Path, it feels like, yeah, really good timing now. And I really, really appreciate it. And, and really also, it's a, it's a marking of how far organic has come and, you know, and what I've seen in my time. And so th this award is really for all the champions for organic. And, th and there are many, uh, you know, out there and many that we have, have here with us today and many others. And, you know, I reflect on it, how it started with the organic cust a customer. I, I don't like to call them consumers. I like to call them customers. Uh, you know, they are not your average customer because they listen to their teachers in the critical thinking class in school. And because of them, it's because of them that I had my long career in organic because they wanted more than what's offered on the regular shelf. They asked questions and more importantly, they took action and changed their shopping choices. This is how organic succeeded. And without them, I would not be here today thanking you for this awesome recognition. I've seen it all in my time with organic from dry wrinkled carrots and a handful of lemons tucked away in the corner of the fresh produce shelf at the grocery stores with a handwritten note saying organic. Clearly, it did not fly off the shelf in the early 80s. And organic was an idea that whose time had not come yet. And but timing is everything. And a few of us hung in there. And I'm, I'm glad we did. Today, even mainstream retailers offer the most desirable shelf space to organic. And it's hard to keep it stocked. So obviously now we, we are in a whole different space than when organic first started in the, in the 80s. Uh, or, you know, even before that. And uh, so I think now we have to realize that organic is really all about love. And just bear with me here. It usually starts with the parent's love for their child and also a desire to take better care of oneself. But love really starts in the soil. It protects and nurtures the life in the soil those now famous microorganisms that are responsible for the health of our food, planet, and climate. And there's more and more recognition for this now and <clears throat> understanding of the role that, that the soil plays. It protects farmers and workers from handling harmful pesticides. Organic protects the health of eaters and provides the optimum nutrition. It protects pollinators, it protects wildlife, it protects our environment, and it has the effect of protecting our climate by capturing carbon in the process. I've been lucky to work with all of you for so many years to love, nurture, and protect basically the life we have on Earth. So your recognition today is a testament that our world is changing and waking up to what we must do to create a bright future for all people for all time. So thank you for everything uh, it's been a wonderful journey and, uh, and I'm sure I'm gonna be involved with, with many of you still for years to come. Thank you. <laughs> That's wonderful. Thank you so much, Doug. Words of wisdom, always. <laughs> Great. Okay, so now we're going to move um, from the fellow who's retiring to the youth <laughs> and we're gonna give out some wonderful awards. I'd like to... Um, highlight that the, uh, this next award is called the Canadian Eco Scholar Award. It's an initiative by Yorkshire Valley Farms in conjunction with the Guelph Organic Conference. And I will hand it over to Kristen Cooper from Yorkshire Valley Farms to, um, to allocate out the awards as it is their initiative, which we're partnering on um, in our own way, which I will explain at the very end. But um, I will hand it over to you, Kristen, if you're ready to go. Thank you, Tia. It's really nice to see so many faces. I apologize if small humans join us. Um, I've got two kids home from school, so there may be some little people in the background here. Um, the Eco Scholar Program. 
been involved in now for a couple of years and you know I feel really lucky to be the one internally that, that gets to lead it but um, it's an award that that existed within the Guelph Organic Conference in different forms over time and then Yorkshire Valley Farms and the Guelph Organic Conference came together a couple of years ago to kind of expand the award and invest some more funding into it um, as a way to really support that next generation of organic leaders and we're lucky to have a few of them here with us they can give a little wave we're going to announce who they are but if there's some faces and you're going those look like awfully nice young people they are um, they're young people with really big ideas about how the organic regenerative movement can progress we put uh, $10,000 of total funding into the award and it was allocated across four students this year. Um, it's open to students in any province or territory in Canada, in any area of study at any level. Really, it's your passion, their passion for, for organics and progressing um, organic agriculture in our communities that, that brings them to the award. Um, you know, and one of the really fun parts of being involved in this is working with the judges, some of whom are, are also here with us today, because I love getting the feedback where they say, oh, thanks so much for letting me be part of that. Those videos are so inspiring. You know, I am so excited by what I'm hearing from these students, so excited by the ideas that are being put forward. And so it's, you know, it's, it's such an invigorating program to hear all the amazing things that these students are working on and all these ideas that are being, um, you know, pursued through academia and will will ultimately help grow our community. Um, and so, as I said, we've got some students here with some big ideas and big plans to, to make things better as we go forward. You don't really want to hear from me, you want to hear from them. So let's let's introduce them and um, a few words about kind of what they're working on and, and what they're so excited about uh, from an agriculture perspective. So the, as I said, there's $10,000 the um, that's spread across four students in the main awards. And today we have with us um, Emily Loggy. Are you here? Give a wave. Emily, Ryan Johnson, I saw from the University of Waterloo. Uh, Tanya Broshinsky from the University of Guelph, who I don't think is here, but if you are, do give a wave. And Olivia Willoughby, also from the University of Guelph. So these are our four winners in the main category with some super, super interesting ideas. Um, you can go to the Yorkshire Valley Farms website and each of their application videos is linked there. So if you wanna see you know, what they talked about and, and what they're working on to learn more, you can certainly go there. But Tia, is it okay if I invite them to say a few words now? You bet. Okay, great. Um, so I, I'm not sure, you know, we don't wanna put anyone on the spot. Um, some of you mentioned when we emailed ahead of time, you'd be up for it, but raise your virtual hand um, and we can uh, give you a few minutes. I, we would love to hear a little bit more. I will not do it justice trying to explain your academic research. I see Ryan's got his hand up. Ryan, did you want to say a few words? Ryan, stop me. <laughs> <laughs> um, Emily knows very well that I like to talk probably too much. Um, it's been such a pleasure to work with her the last two years on uh, a life cycle assessment project of organic ag across Canada, which she, in, in truth, is leading the charge on, and she deserves every bit of credit that you can muster and send her way. Uh, she's an absolute star. Um, I also just want to say right off the bat, thank you so much uh, for this award. It's such a pleasure to be here and to be amongst such great minds who are doing so much for organic agriculture. It's truly inspiring. Um, and on that note, uh, Kristen, you did share some questions we should address. So <laughs> uh, on the topic of, you know, being passionate about organic and regenerative ag, um, for me, I just... I've always wanted to be a farmer, but not having been born into that, it's obviously a struggle to penetrate. So why not just research it <laughs> uh, if I can't get the land? Um, it's, you know, it's, it's an activity which has defined our relationship with nature since the end of the last ice age and continues to do so, changing our systems, um, not always for the better, but it does have the potential to re re reverse that. Uh, and that's something I would very much love to contribute to. My work with farmers has been very inspirational in that respect. And I can see how much energy and time and passion these unsung heroes are pouring into the soil and it deserves to be recognized. Um, the second question was, what am I currently doing? It has changed course a little bit. Um, <clears throat> uh, and. It's actually due to some consulting that I've been doing. So 
I, I was doing some work with a firm on the National Agri-Food Sustainability Index, and that really got me interested in uh, sustainability reporting in general, which I have learned is quite a crowded space for agri-food. Um, <clears throat> and that has brought some of these reporting standards into competition with each other, which I'm investigating whether that actually hinders progress and how do these standards even capture uh, regeneration or do they? Um, so those are some questions I'm asking and looking at how these standards have actually even been designed from the ground up, whether farmers have even been brought on board for some of the major standards and how can we compare the results across so many different indices? So that's sort of some of the questions and themes I'm looking at. And in terms of how I hope to contribute to progressing the organic community, um, through my professional work, um, I mentioned the index, but I've also worked with uh, a lot of economic development firms and municipalities uh, which are struggling. And I've helped, I've tried to focus on agriculture as a solution to these communities which have essentially gone bust due to their reliance on a single industry, which has shut its doors and moved away. And now they have nothing. And as we recover from COVID, so much of um, economic development has sort of focused on relocalization and tourism and agriculture and there's a lot of opportunity there that i'm hoping to um, make these communities aware of and form those relationships and help them to understand what they can do to bring themselves out of the last two years and uh, work with farmers to really yeah, bring, bring themselves back into a place of prosperity um, so that's just a little bit about me as I said at the start, Emily knows I could just keep going. So I'm going to have to stop myself and pass the torch to her. <laughs> but thank you very much. Thank you, Ryan. It's great to hear what you're working on. Emily, did you want to say a few words? Yeah, I can jump in there. Um, yeah, so uh, I have always had a background in agriculture throughout my education. Um, farming has been in my family, although not something I have done directly. So um, it's always been an interest of mine and a passion. Um, however, I am fairly new to this organic space and to the regenerative movement. Um, so in the past couple of years, I've had the opportunity to learn so much. And one of the biggest takeaways I've learned is um, the people in this space are just such a pleasure to work with. Um, Organic producers are so eager to promote organic, to promote what they're working on. And they're also just so eager to be a part of the research that I'm doing, um, which I didn't even mention. Um, I'm looking at the greenhouse gas emissions of um, organic field crop farms all across the nation. Um, so quite a big task at hand. But um, as I mentioned, everybody is so eager to participate. They're very willing to um, lend their time, lend their data. Um, so it's been such a great learning experience. And I'm so honored to be a part of this group and to have learned so much in the last couple of years. So um, with this award, I'm just looking forward to continuing my research, continuing to learn more about organic and what regenerative means and how those interact with each other. Um, so essentially, I'm just looking to be a sponge and absorb as much as I possibly can. So thank you very much for um, the recognition. And I greatly appreciate it. Oh, you're most welcome. It's our pleasure. And Olivia, did you want to say a few words about what you're working on? Yeah, for sure. Happy to jump in. Uh, yeah, first, before I do that, I'd like to say thank you. Uh, to Yorkshire Valley Farms and to CODA for having us here today and for the recognition that uh, we've gotten. Um, yeah, so I, I'm a master's student at the University of Guelph. Um, my master's is actually in animal breeding and genetics. Uh, primarily, I'm a sheep geneticist, which uh, is, I think, kind of unusual uh, for the group of people that we have here. But my project is really looking at how we can breed sheep for uh, resistance to parasites, which is um, really exciting for sheep producers because it means that they're gonna be able to graze their sheep on pasture, um, which is a recognized regenerative and sustainable practice. And it also means that the sheep are going to be able to uh, grow nice and healthy without having to um, receive any antibiotics or uh, anthelmintics is the word that we use for anti-parasitic medicine. Um, so that's really exciting to me and another thing that I, I like to talk about that I'm working on is that I am a topical area advisor at the Aral Food Institute at the University of Guelph. 
um, where I work with a few other students on topics related to regenerative ag. And I'm really, really interested in uh, the language we use in particular to talk about regenerative and sustainable and organic agriculture. Um, because I think a lot of the times, especially in the livestock sector, uh, there are kind of different definitions on what we are talking about. So, or different ideas on what counts as uh, regenerative or sustainable or organic. And so, yeah, I'm really looking forward to be like continue being active in this conversation and um, helping livestock producers in particular uh, work towards a more sustainable production sector. So yeah, thank you very much for having us here. And yeah, thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Olivia. Um, now, something that's really exciting about the, the 2022 program is that, it, sorry, my kids' TV show just ended and so they're both <laughs> losing their mind. Just <laughs> Maybe I'll, I'll come in while, while she uh, puts the TV on her. <laughs> um, uh, just to highlight that it's been an honor. I, I was on the judging panel for the last couple of years and I get so excited watching your guys' video submissions when they come in that I actually, I begged Kirsten, Kristen last year, I said, can you talk to them about whether we can actually air some of the videos on the organic week, during organic week, because just to feel like the next generation is coming and that there's inspiring, enthusiastic, you know, people for the next gen of organic, it really is exciting to me. So, so yeah, back to you, Kristen. <laughs> Uh, you're better, than the, better than the Oscars, like we planned it. Um, <laughs> what, one of the things that's also really exciting about this year's program is, is working with CODA, we've been able to introduce a, a, an honorable mention category. So able to recognize four more students for their efforts and celebrate more, um, more, more of the great work that's happening there. And so the four students that, um, that we've got, and I think I, I saw, I think I saw Noah. Uh, we've got Noah Britson of the University of British Columbia, Keir Lightburn from the University of Guelph, Brooke Rice from Concordia, and Jenna Aldis from the University of British Columbia are our four honorable mentions. And it's been a really nice initiative to have that, um, that additional ability to include those students. I mean, we get so many great submissions. And so when, when T and I were talking about this, the idea that we could include more students in the Eco Scholar program this year and, and recognize the work that they're doing was really exciting. So thank you, Dakota, for supporting that. Um, I'm not sure. No, I think you're here. Are you put, pop your hand up if you are and, and give a wave. Unless you have to drop off. Sorry, I'm, I'm scanning my squares. Yeah, I don't see him now. I saw him earlier, but I think he must not be here now. Yeah, I think I think we've lost our honorable mentions. But um, as I said, on the Yorkshire Valley Farms website, if you go there, you can link to all of the application videos to learn a little bit more about what these students are working on. Um, and thank you again to Coda for, for joining up with us to be able to recognize more of these folks. Thanks. It's, it's a pleasure. And, um, you know, I think the more that we can do to encourage youth. So what, what Coda contributed was um, funding towards their books um, and their future education. And on that note, I mentioned the amazing videos. We want to share with you um, a small video, uh, which is a little compilation from some of the submissions. So um, bear with us while we queue that up. But uh, it's really exciting, this, uh, this partnership, just to be able to really acknowledge everybody all the way through the whole value chain. Bear with us. <laughs> no problem. I've, I've got a great, here's, here comes my jump in for the filler. So we're going to share this video. It's pretty hot off the press. And as we were getting organized, I was like, ah, there's a typo. So if you spot the typo, message me in the chat and I will send you a prize for your good proof <laughs> eyes. <laughs> so it's worth paying attention. I think there's actually, there's actually two typos. So if you find either one of them, the prize is yours. <laughs>
My thesis project is focused on calculating the net greenhouse gas emissions of organic farms across Canada. Last year, I was inspired by films like The Biggest Little Farm and Kiss the Ground to transform our 150-acre farm into a regenerative practice. In 2020, I have been an active uh, contributor to a nationwide life cycle assessment of organic field crops. My primary involvement in sustainable and organic agriculture is through my master's project, which focuses on identifying and understanding genetic mechanisms, controlling resistance to parasites in grazing sheep. That's wonderful. So hopefully you've got some prizes to give out. I never noticed any errors, but. <laughs> oh, I, I, yeah, Sabrina's on it. I owe Sabrina. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wonderful. Well, thank you so much. And congratulations to all of the wonderful um, students who are continuing to study in organic and, um, and continue to move the movement forward, so. So with that, we're coming to our ending time of the um, of the ceremony today, and we're very excited just to acknowledge everybody. We do this on an annual basis, but just to highlight again that um, the people that are participating um, in this organic movement um, and this organic industry are game changers. We are very motivated um, and inspired by all of your actions, and I think that. Um, we need to continue to keep coming together as, as a movement to uh, take organic to the next level. I'm very happy to see that we've got, you know, public trust is the highest for organic out of all the sustainability claims, but we've got a long ways to go still. So thank you everybody for all your hard work and for attending today's um, ceremony. And we will see you at next year's Leadership Awards in 2023. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.